Hi everybody, welcome back to another video on Feynman integration. Um, well, actually, I shouldn't have said that. This is not actually going to be a Feynman integration video. Uh, like I said in my last video, we will be reevaluating um, this integral right here using King's property, which is stated right here. King's property says that the integral from A to B of f of x dx is equal to the integral from a to b of f of a plus b minus x dx. So, uh, like I said, we're going to uh, use King's property to evaluate this integral. So the first step is we want to apply King's property to this. So what we're going to do, so basically that means that I, if I is equal to the integral from 0 to pi of the natural log of 1 minus cosine x dx, then it's also equal to the integral from 0 to pi of the natural log of 1 minus cosine of pi minus x. And if you evaluate that, you can, you can kind of, uh, you can see it graphically also, um, but it, it's, it's a trig identity. Uh, the cosine of um, pi minus x is negative cosine x. So that's how I get this next equality here. So this is also equal to the integral from 0 to pi of the natural log of 1 plus cosine x dx. And then what I do is I add them together and use the properties of logarithms um, to, to bring the sum inside the one natural log as a product. And when you do that, you get that 2i, because we're adding i and i, is equal to the integral from 0 to pi of the natural log of 1 minus cosine squared x dx. And we all know that 1 minus cosine squared x is sine squared x, which I have written right down here. So finally, we get that 2i is equal to the integral from 0 to pi of 2 times the natural log of sine x, because uh, what I'm doing is I'm using properties of logarithms again to bring this exponent outside the natural log. So that's what we have right now. And of course, this 2 cancels and this 2 cancels, leaving us simply i being equal to the integral from 0 to pi of the natural log of sine x dx. For our next step, we are going to split this integral up into two integrals. Um, the first one going from 0 to pi over 2 and the second one going from pi over 2 to pi. We all know that the integral from zero from a to b plus the integral from b to c is equivalent to the integral from a to c. Um, so that's how I get, uh, that's how I justify saying that i is also equal to this because we have from zero to pi over two plus pi over two to pi, which is simply zero to pi, which is what we started with. Um, so the next thing I do is I just make a substitution right here uh, to get my bounds of integration the same. So now we'll have that i is equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the natural log of sine of x dx plus the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the natural log of sine of x plus pi over 2 dx. And that's just going from, from there to there is just a substitution u is equal to x minus pi over 2. Um, and then, of course, I didn't use u's. I, I put x right back in, but you all know that that's the same thing. I don't think any of you have a problem seeing that this is equivalent to that. And, of course, sine of x plus pi over 2 is simply cosine x. So now we have that i is equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the natural log of sine of x dx plus the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the natural log of cosine x dx. Again, I'm going to bring those two together and use the, the uh, properties of natural logs to simply create one uh, integral, i being equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the, sin, of the natural log of sine x cosine x dx. I hope you can see how I did that. I added this to this, which would give us natural log sine x plus natural log cosine x which is simply the natural log of sine x cosine x. You'll notice that this almost represents um, uh, the sine of 2x, because if we had a 2 right there, it would be 2 sine x cosine x, which would be sine 2x. So what I'm going to do is I'll just put a 2 in there. 
Uh, so that changed the equation by, f um, so basically what that did is we added an integral from zero to pi over two of the natural log of a two dx. So I just subtracted it out right away and evaluated it. So I hope you can see, uh, see this step. I just inserted a two, but since that had the effect of really adding a whole other integral from zero to pi over two of the natural log of two, I subtracted it. And of course, this is the natural log of sine 2x. And then in the next step, I made the substitution that u is equal to 2x. And then, of course, I, I replaced the u's with x's at the end to get that i is equal to one half the integral from zero to pi of the natural log of sine x dx. And this Right here, one half integral zero to pi of natural log sine x dx is one half i. Because remember, i is the integral from zero to pi of the natural log of sine x dx. So finally, we have that i is equal to one half i minus pi natural log two over two. Um, and then multiplying um, both sides of the equation by two, gives us that i is equal to negative pi natural log 2, which is exactly what we got last time. So that's it. The same integral we did in the previous video, just evaluated with a different trick. I believe the last video I evaluated it using um, the Leibniz rule and uh, the Weierstrauss substitution. You can find uh, more detailed explanations of King's property uh, which is what I use today, and the Weierstrauss substitution. Um, I believe it's in my playlist called uh, Proofs and Tools. So anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that.